happy Sunday to all my friends, my subscribers, to all drivers worldwide. Uh, the topic of my video today, um, how much has your ride share business uh, declined by? How much has it dropped? And um, are you staying at home? Are you making the tough choice? Are you saying, hey, I'm going to go out there, try and hustle a couple of hours, try and see what I can make? Or are you saying, you know what? It's absolutely not worth it. Wow. I like the fact that American Profit immediately says 95%. Like, I'm only getting 5% of my trips. Nine, It's dropped by 95%. So, Mark Routen, howdy. Um, Mark Routen will relate to this video um, that I'm going to run in the background here. Uh, let's just uh, launch that one quickly. Uh, this is a typical city in the United States. Maybe, maybe not really a typical city. Vegas is obviously quite different, right? It, it relies on its tourism. But this, this city is hurting, Vegas. Another day in Nevada. That's the yeah, ad. Let's get past that. Las Vegas, you know that sign. Has anybody ever taken a picture at that sign? At that Las Vegas sign? I love that sign. That sort of like neon sign in the beginning on both ends of Vegas, of the Strip. Here it is. The parking lot near McCarran Airport is usually McCarran. where Uber and Lyft drivers await their rides. But due to the coronavirus, they find themselves waiting much longer than usual. It's like ghost city here, no business, nothing here. I've been here since 9 o'clock this morning. Uber and Lyft drivers grounded as the Las Vegas Strip nears empty. It's slowed down yeah. about three weeks ago, but the real decline came this week. Casino shut down and no tourists coming here, only local coming and going. With their bills and livelihood on the line. Hoping just for a ride to anywhere. You know, we, we need to try to make at least some money rather than staying home and looking at the four walls. But Malcolm December, a Lyft driver of four years, says safety for both himself and his riders come first. I don't allow anyone to sit in my front seat anymore. And... You know, I wipe my car down in between rides. Even requesting that shared pool rides be suspended for the time being. I think it's an easier way to spread the virus with, you know, multiple people coming into your car. But December says he and other drivers need to live. Both Uber and Lyft only provide drivers financial relief if they are diagnosed with COVID-19. So he signed up for Lyft's new partnership to get seniors to the grocery store or doctor's appointments. The ones that need to get around the healthcare services, they need to get around, they need to get to work, and we need we need to keep them mobile if, they, if that's what they need. December realizes he is in the same position as many during this coronavirus pandemic. It's not the best feeling in the world to see, you know, the entire strip shut down. A lot of our colleagues, drivers, a lot of people in the hotel and casino industry, everybody's out of a job right now. But says something needs to be done. I would like to do what I can to help in our community. Cool. I like his attitude. I've got to say, I like his attitude. He says, I'd like to do what I can in our community, right? But um, that, again, is a tough choice. Like, for example, being a nurse, uh, being a firefighter, being a police fighter, being a doctor in a hospital, absolutely, you're doing everything for your community right now, but you're probably just like drivers. You're on the front line. So if, you, um, if you've been looking at this week, this last week, right? We're on Sunday. Um, I would almost say a week ago, and this has just been going rapidly, right? Um, every day, I sort of saw my business drop 10%. And I completely believe if some people say, you know what, today, as I wake up, I'm not even going to go out there on a Sunday because, you know, I noticed yesterday it's down by, um, by 80, 90%, right? So, if we can share here, Elias, how are you? Ryan, the rider driver, David Garcia, very good morning to all of you. Um, if we can share um, what city we drive in, what platform we drive in, maybe how many hours we put in on Friday or Saturday, what did we get in returns? You know, did we drive in Vegas on UberX? We put in X amount of hours, we made um, Z amount of dollars, and we spent. Um, 
uh, X amount of dollars on gas, right? So we can do the math. Ro Robert Alvarez says, foolish to volunteer for these crap rates to expose yourself to many people. Yeah, there's, there's people with um, different attitudes on this. There's like the guys who want to be the heroes or think they're the heroes, right? By doing certain things. And then there's the people that say, you know what? My health, my life comes first, right? Um, and my business is down. I mean, my, my uh, driving business is down 80%. But I have other, you know, wood in the fire. So I don't stress just because this area is slow, shut down. But listen, for many, many drivers, this is like, this is the everything. Look, guys, I'm making a video right now on um, uh, Vegas, and this guy shares pictures. These are pictures that just, just came in right now on the strip, right? I think that's... Old part of Vegas. You know, those empty, remember you see all those people on those escalators, are rather eerie, right? If you, if you had to be, I'm not in Vegas right now, but I know Vegas, right? Anytime I've driven through Vegas, doesn't matter at what time of the day, 4 a.m., 2 p.m. in the afternoon, whatever it was, there's always people like little ants everywhere. You know, people coming, going, coming out of clubs, going there, gambling, going from the next hotel to drive down the Vegas strip must be quite an eerie feeling. Can anybody uh, uh, verify that? Any Vegas driver, am I making stuff up here or is it rather eerie? Um, Alan Winston says, Uber X Milwaukee online at home, seven hours waiting for a ride, no pings, I give up. So like Alan, maybe people have put themselves out, they put their app on, it's been waiting seven hours, no pings, done, done, right? That may be the Sunday, who knows what the Monday looks like, but there will be those very, 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 very few trips out there. Now, it's in these trying times, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm going to read you this article and another one, right? There's another article that I found over here. Um, where is it? This one's this one is by the hustle amid a pandemic. Uber drivers choose between health and livelihood. Right? It's very much sign of the times what we're reporting right now. But yesterday, if you can remember, I made a video uh, where I said lives over dollars. In fact, I I apologize. I incorrectly in the video said lives over drivers. Gosh no. I think that was just in the heat of reporting. I, I made the uh, mistake. I said, hashtag lives over drivers. Absolutely not lives over dollars. But all of these characters here, they know who they are, right? Um, these are people collecting, still collecting a lot of money during these super, super trying times. These are people that are not at their office desk. They're not at the headquarters but they're probably 95%, I'm making a guess, working from home, communicating, emailing with the staff, uh, working remotely, communicating with the engineering team, who the engineer, head of the engineering team, then is communicating with all the engineers um, here or there, pushing out a couple of press releases, a lot of phone calls going on between these guys. But the one thing that all of these people have in common if you had to if you had to add up all their salaries, right? Call it 10 executives, 10 top top dogs at um, Uber, 10 top top dogs at Lyft. If you had to add up um, all their salaries together, it's it's one massive massive number. And what I challenged these people to yesterday and this is why I want to get this thing viral, lives over dollars. I truly believe their mentality, the way that they're steering this Titanic, is they putting dollars over lives, right? 
history will be written. These people will be judged, right? That they truly put the money over the livelihood, over the drivers, right? And they will live with that for the rest of their lives. You know, in five, 10 years time, this guy here, uh, Chai, will be saying, you know, I remember back then, coronavirus times, how selfish we were, how greedy we were. This guy in 10, 15 years time, he'll be sitting there with his wife and saying, remember when I used to be CEO, you know, I can't live with myself and uh, that I made that decision. I, I allowed, I put the drivers out there. I, I, I fought them on the AB5. I fought them on um, the coronavirus. I did not put the monies into a fund. I um, had my attorneys, Tony West, Katie Weitzman, Randall Heimovicki. I had them bend the law so that we didn't have to pay out money into the fund. I wish I had done things differently. Can you imagine a scenario 10 years from now, if these guys don't act now or don't do something, um, can you imagine what conscience, what consciousness they have or what conscience they have, right? Sorry, wrong word. Um, they will be thinking about this every single day. We could have done better back then, right? And I have called upon all of these individuals yesterday to put 80%, 80% of their salary. Can you imagine what 80% of $45 million is? Or one gets 20 million, the other one gets 8 million, the other one gets 10 million, the other one gets 20 million. Can you just imagine what 80% of that figure comes to? It comes to a few hundred million dollars if you add up all these people. And I haven't shown everyone here on the top, top level, right? Then you have middle management and higher management, you know, challenge them to give up 10 to 20% of their salary and put it into the COVID-19 rideshare driver fund. And that rideshare driver fund, by the way, it, it goes for Uber, it goes for Lyft, right? It's a very, very simple challenge. These people want to show that they're human or do these people want to show that they're absolute cunts? right? Like t absolute assholes that just don't care for drivers, right? They have a choice here. So if they are humans, let's say they give up 80% of their supersonic salaries, middle management, higher management gives up 20% of their salaries, all engineers, anyone who is an employee at Uber and Lyft says we give up 10% of our salaries and we put it in a fund. Right there and then, ladies and gentlemen, you have a $1 billion, right there and then. You have a billion dollars, guaranteed. I'll do the math any day, right? Because what all of these people need to understand, what middle management and higher management at Uber and Lyft need to understand, what every engineer at Uber and Lyft needs to understand, what every em employer who's receiving a paycheck at Uber and Lyft need to understand is that the workforce, the labor force, the soldiers, the three to four million soldiers on the ground on the highways, on the byways, on the streets, on the avenues, in the cul-de-sacs, uh, I'm talking about us, of course, right, is that we are bringing in the money to pay for their smiles, right? See this smile? Somebody took this picture, and there was a photographer that took this picture with this cheesy smile, with that cheesy smile, with that fake smile, with that fake smile. You see, they're all smiling, <laughs> right? They're all smiling because... They know they're receiving a lot of money. They paid that photographer to take these professional photos, a lot of money. And that's, you know, that's money we bringing in. In fact, we paid the photographers to take these cheesy pictures, right? We, that's what we paid for, right? So I'm not asking for much because if you're earning $45 million, right, and you're giving up 80%, you're still smiling because you have a lot of shares, right? Maybe not worth much in these times, but... 20% um, of $45 million is still a lot of money, right? If I do my quick calculation, it should be like $9 million. Who earns $9 million a year? You know, out of the 45 million, if you're um, keeping nine and you're giving up, you know, uh, 30, 36 million, putting it into that fund, you're putting money in the fund that will see drivers through these times. The people that have built your company over all of the years, that is who you are 
taken care of temporarily until we get through this, right? So um, I think that's a very legitimate um, challenge, ladies and gentlemen, when I say lives over dollars. The other thing that I also say is that um, they should send an email out to all riders, and there's millions and millions and millions of riders worldwide and say, look, it's the drivers that got is, uh, that are still getting you through these times. It's the drivers that have helped you out in the past. It's a very simple letter to formulate that you can email out and blast to all riders, to the apps worldwide and say, um, we are increasing the fares by 15 to 20% over the next five months, maybe just over the next five months. So we can put that money towards the drivers who are on the front lines. Right there and then, you probably have freed up a few more billion dollars. So I have just, with a very simple solution, um, shown you how to free up a billion and a f further few billion dollars. Um, even if you get three billion dollars into a fund over the next 60 days, totally doable according to my calculation. And I'm working with conservative numbers, right? And I've run some numbers. I've looked at their salaries. I've run some numbers. I'm not just making the stuff up here willy-nilly but even based on the very few trips that are taken out there even if these people say okay in these trying times you know there is a COVID-19 rate because the guy is it's like danger pay right when I was in the army I used to get danger pay if I'd go into certain areas right if I'd go into high risk areas they would pay me danger pay right so that was the South African Defense Force by the way SADF but ladies and gentlemen these riders need to understand that over the next few months, there should be danger pay. There should be an added fee for that. And they should say, no problem at all. No problem at all. We totally understand if it weren't for these drivers on these streets, these people going out, we wouldn't get from A to B. We wouldn't get from C to D. We wouldn't get from E to F. Correct? Am I right or am I wrong? Life in Las Vegas has agreed these guys need to change not driving till things. Yeah, we need to slow the sucker down, right? Slow it, slow it down, right? Um, only the people that, look, I, I, don't want, I don't want drivers to be on the roads right now. I don't, because your, your life is worth way more. Your health is worth way more than any dollar that these guys are requesting from you, right? Now, do there need to be systems in place to get these individuals around. I, I say, you know, every, every city has buses, right? Practice social um, distancing on those buses and have those buses go around, you know, taking people to where they need to go. But to put people on the front lines, connecting possible high-risk riders and the numbers are increasing exponentially with drivers just adds to the problem because the moment that rider gets out the moment that driver gets out maybe one affected the other one or the other infected the driver whichever way around you now go into the public you're touching this you and boom 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 right and they continue to sit at home working on their laptops and say bring in the money bring in the money well, this ain't funny. We're not bringing in the money, right? We're not making money. So uh, the best thing is just, I would almost say stop driving. It's, it's, it's tough for me to say, right? Um, I will now only get into my car and attend to maybe some of my private clients and I will have them pay a lot of money. You know, I don't think that I would go out there right now um, and do a very basic trip or let's say I got to pick, I don't know, I got to pick up one individual, take them. They'll obviously ask about who am I picking up? Where am I taking you? If I make the call and say, no, that's too high risk for me, I won't. But let's say, you know, my clients need something from a certain home. They need to get it from this house to that house. I'm charging premium, premium dollars, right? Nothing under two, three hundred dollars for, for a trip. Sorry, you either pay it, they have the money or you don't pay it, right? But you guys should not, I'm not doing Uber and Lyft trips right now, no. It's just complete insane madness to do it.
They can't expect it. So um, I see their shares dropping, gosh, down to $12 in, in a month from now, at least, because there's absolutely no money coming in. Carlos Palima says, hello, buddy. Torsten, may you and your family be safe in, the, in these times. I appreciate you wishing me that, and I extend those same wishes to all of you out there. May your families be protected. Um, if you have mothers and fathers that are over 70 years old, please take, if youngers are helping out seniors, whatever, work together, work smart, right? And I wish you the very same. I can just mirror that directly back to the community that just please stay safe. And if you're really out there on the front lines, please be ultra, ultra, ultra safe. Every trip, spray it down, the carpets, the seats, you know what, and just let the person know, you know what, I've used a lot of disinfectant, uh, excuse the smell, right, but um, sign of the times, it's what I got to do. They should be understanding. If they've switched on the radio, if they've watched the news, if they've picked up a paper, and hopefully they've picked up a paper with glove hands, because with, with gloves on the hands, because um, this virus on paper or on a newspaper stays for three to five days. Fact, I made that video yesterday. Um, Omar's in the house. Abdi, um, Abdi Kadir, is it lockdown where you live? Yes, indeed. Thank you for asking. It's in, in California, it's lockdown. But um, we're exempted. Right, taxi drivers, limo drivers, rideshare drivers are essential to the system to keep it going. So it's an essential service. So we can cruise around there. You know, I'm, I'm, I have my Uber sticker in the front and the Lyft sticker. If any cop sees me, they'll say, oh, you know what? I'm not going to pull this guy over. I don't even have to question him. He's a rideshare driver, right? So those stickers will get you around in these times. Damon Brook just signed up for Amazon. Okay, so now, now we're getting to um, solution, solution messages. Damon, that's awesome. Just signed up for Amazon Flex. Understand that Amazon is hiring 100,000 people. So if you look at some of my um, latest videos, I was showing who was hiring. I had a private call in yesterday by Bruce's Catering who looking for drivers to deliver foods. So th this, this is our job right now is to look after each other. Uh, you may have just gotten an Amazon Flex job. Cool. How do you now help your brothers and sisters get another job? Because collectively, as a family, we've got to get through this. These guys are not taking care of us, ladies and gentlemen. They're absolutely not taking care of us, right? So, um, you know, finding solutions, working with your fellow man, fellow woman, um, is the way to go. By the way, I, want, I, I just got this ultra, ultra funny little message. And I always, every live feed now, I want to share a little bit of humor with you guys as well. Because I think this is absolutely funny and also very very important in these times that we practice some humor see this guy here what listen to his response it's just sheer brilliant because of coronavirus you are going to be quarantined do you guys like that i think it's just brilliant hey would you like to um quarantine with your wife or child a or b b b b i thought that was funny um, so JD doesn't feel um, really happy about Amazon. He says, "F Amazon, slave labor." We all have our we all have our opinions. Listen, I want to share with you, and you're entitled to your opinion. You're entitled to your opinion, and I want to I want to share some like sad news. I had a friend up there in Utah. Shane Constable, that's his name. He wrote me a pretty nasty email. And we've had a relationship through Facebook and YouTube, right? And my job here really is to, A, show you how to make money. And in trying times, showing you how to get through this. That's my job, right? Um, in between, we can, we can have fun. We can talk. We can joke. But, you know, you build up, you build up relationships. Um, you build up relationships with people. And then I get uh, through through live streaming. And then you get like, I get this really, really nasty letter where the person is judging me by one comment I made against the president when I said, I think the president could have done more 
in these trying times. And I've criticized Republicans, I've criticized Democrats in my channel. Just t I just tell the truth, right? Democrats fuck up on this side, I say it. If the Republicans fuck up on something, I say it. That's just who I am, right? But because I spoke against his boy, right, he just wrote me this la nasty, nasty letter, how he has to cut ties with me and how I don't get it. Uh, and that's because I said they acted very late in the game and they could have done more. They had this intelligence in January. They only started waking up end of February, March, right? So he went off and, you know, that's okay. If you want to unfriend me over that, if I lose a subscriber over that, buddy, I can tell you what, I can put my head down um, on the pillow at night and go to rest um, with a very, very positive outlook on life, with no judgments, with no negativity towards you. That's your choice, right? Um, but I got to keep it real, you know, and um, I call out Uber and Lyft executives, you know, I tell them they've screwed up big times in these times. I've called up Democrat, I've called out Democrats, I've called out Republicans for failing to lead, for failing to unite each other, not working together, resolving things for us. So judge me as you wish. Shane Constable, still call your friend. Much love to you. May your journey take you wherever you want to. Um, I can't please everyone. That's not my job. And if you want to unsubscribe and unfriend me on Facebook, that's your choice. Cheers. Have a good life, my friend. So, and I, I allow people a lot of freedom in my channel. If the guy wants to put in there, whatever, Trump 2020 or Biden 2020, whatever, right? Do it. But if you want to just like, if that's all you want to talk about and if you want to inject your political beliefs in my stream and if you can't focus on the more important things the coronavirus how to get through offer solutions this is a riot chair channel it's not a political channel i'll tell you right now it's not a political channel right we gotta no matter where you stand on politics right now is not a time to say you fucking idiot you fucking idiot um we gotta do this keep together and get through this together, right? Let's let's get through summer, folks. I want to get through summer. Let's get to 2021. Let's get everybody live and healthy to 2021. And then, then I think we've accomplished a lot, politics aside. So don't use my channel, please, as a, a political playground. You know, if I can see that you're really, really trying to push your agenda, I kick you out. I want you to more come with the approach that um, no matter who I represent, no matter who I am going to vote for in November, what I want to do here, and I'm talking about you guys, is that Rolf Stark, exactly, fuck politics. I, I agree with you. Um, I would rather like to us to focus, laser focus our efforts, put insane pressure on Uber and Lyft and push for change. That's the, that's the one thing, right? Better pay, change, maybe better leadership, put so much pressure that these guys resign. The other thing, the most even more important than them, even more important than all of these goofball and donkeys around here, right? Even way more important than that is you, your health, your family. And that is today, right, on March the 22nd, what game plan am I putting in place so that with Torsten, with Scott, with Jay, with Stephen, with Brad, with Ryan, we all collectively show up and march healthy into 2021 and should another pandemic come in three or four years time we're ready for you we have everything we have the respiration machines respirators we have millions and millions of these in place we have a gazillion of these in place we have a trillion of these in place and we know we've learned so much from 2020 especially december 2019 till April 2020. We've learned so much. And whatever comes our way in five years' time, in 10 years' time, we're ready. Right? We're ready. So that's the objective of my channel. And as I mentioned that, I, I ask you kindly here, we have 136 people in the house. 
I ask you also kindly to just give me a thumbs up because I'm devoting my time. I'm rallying all our brothers and sisters together. I'm trying to inject some humor. I'm trying to push for change. I'm trying to find solutions with you. And you guys are really, truly the solution providers. That's how I see you love and light, send you much love and light. You guys, the amount of ideas, the wealth of suggestions, the wealth of information that these people, you, have shared in this channel is just beyond, right? Any CEO, any politician should just tap into street level and understand what type of contributions and ideas come from channels. It's insane. It's like we are able to move things. We are able to share things. We are actually, we are actually saving lives. I just want to let all of you know, whether it's Robin, Colleen, Mark, Scott, all of you, that you are saving lives because you are moving information out that you, you know, we make a video on about touching services and uh, surfaces. We make a video about disinfectants. We're doing that. I'm going to do that right now. It sounds, sounds like a good idea. I better improvise that right now. And maybe I'm going to help save a couple of lives in my senior home from Philly. Um, I want to give him a big hug in 2020 or 2021, right? I want to march together with these individuals, with you. And we're bigger than this. We're bigger than politics. We're bigger than these um, selfish CEOs. We're the real deal, my friends. We're the people on the street. We're the people. The, the, the service that we are providing is beyond. Can you even remotely think, I owe you a phone call today, Thomas Gibson. Much love. Got to work together. Thank you. Can you just remotely even start thinking for a minute how many lives we've saved over the last few years, what we've done for communities, what we've done for the elderly, what we've done for hospitals. We've been in ambulance many, many times, right? I've, I've driven people to a hospital, to an ER that fell off a bicycle and scraped the entire side of the face, right? We've, we've done amazing things, my friends. We're doing amazing things right now. And what I'm saying is that these people could do amazing things. If they can step out of their ego, if they can step out of their selfishness, if Logan Green could stop being selfish, if Derek Kay could just wipe that false smoke off his face for a second and stop being selfish, if Randall um, Heimovicki saw my value and wanted to work with me, or if Tony West wanted to work with me, um, we can switch this thing around. But if you want to go down that path that you guys are going, you're driving towards self-destruction. You will go nowhere. You will burn the sucker out. This calls for humanity. This calls for leadership, true leadership in these times. You know, it calls for people like Thomas Gibson. It calls for people like Shirelle. Sh it calls for people like Robin. It calls for people like Teddy T. It calls for real people, right? Real times call for real people. And that's the point of this channel is that we will get through this, my friends, and we will fry out the bigger potatoes. We will be doing so many things. And saying that, I do want to get a second channel going, which let me tell you that uh, Thomas will know this, Rideshare 411 will know this, Dustin will know this, uh, Dark Road Run will know this. Um, to build a channel, to build a YouTube channel, to get it to the point of monetization, but you actually monetize it, right? So as I'm making this video, you know, YouTube may block it because of the nature of my content, right? Um, out of, let me give you an idea so that you know, out of, let's say, every hundred videos I make, there may be block five. For whatever reasons, they're not matching ads, you know, paid ads to that video, right? Um, I have eight channels. I probably collectively have about 60 to 65,000 subscribers right now on all eight channels, right? Some more, some less, some different topics, and um, this being one of my main ones. But collectively, I get good little checks here at the end of the month from Google. Google sends me these checks because Google owns YouTube. But I want to get a, a second channel going, which, which started off as a marketing rideshare channel but I want to push it in a whole different direction. This ride share professor, I want to strictly keep um, about the ride share business, about the possibilities, you know, like for example, um, Instacart, 
Uh, Dustin made a good video on Instacart. My Instacart um, link, by the way, is below. With Instacart, it, it's very easy. You sign up, you can be a shopper, driver. My link is below this video. Um, very easy. You take the app, take a picture of the front of your license, you take a picture of the back of your license, you take a picture of your face. Uh, they have a short, brief questionnaire, three questions. You answer that, right? And then depending on the zip code, they put you into driver and shopper mode, which means, which is, I'm telling you, Instacart is absolutely killing Uber and Lyft. Why? Because it's sign of the times, right? People are now saying, okay, we're at a home. We have to self-quarantine. There is some driver out there that'll pick up my groceries from Costco. that will pick up my groceries from Vaughn's. that will pick up my groceries from Walmart. You don't have humans in the car. You're going down to the shopping center. You're picking up the order that that individual put through and you're driving and you put it at, uh, uh, put it down at the house. Now that's safe. You don't have someone in your car that's <laughs> coughing or <laughs> sneezing, right? You, you go down to these areas, you pick up, if, uh, you pick up a, a, a package. It a, encompasses a lot of groceries. Maybe there's some food, pasta, toilet paper, water. Boom, 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 boom. You put it down at the door. Disinfect yourself. You do what you have to do. You haven't touched anything crazily. Maybe even uh, use your gloves to pick up that, uh, that delivery. You put it down and you get paid for that. So Instacart is killing it. The link, by the way, is below, right? Some people right now in these crazy times, they say, okay, well, I'm going to, there's a lot of cheap stocks I can buy. And there's some lot of dollar stocks, penny stocks out there that have just dropped, 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 dropped over the coronavirus. Hey, I'm, I may want, may want to use this opportunity. Some people will think like that to make some money. You know, um, I'm not going out there um, trying to capitalize on this coronavirus. But here and there, I've got to admit, there were some deals that were just too good to be true. Groupon, for example, bought a lot of Groupon shares. Um, I have a link beneath called Robin Hood. I'm sure you guys have heard of it. If you don't, if you want to buy a couple of very, very cheap stocks or browse and look at the charts, very interesting stuff to see how like the, see how companies are behaving in the coronavirus. Some pharmaceutical companies are going up. Glove companies are going up. These company type of stocks are going up. Airline stocks are going down. Uber is going down. Groupon has tanked. Instacart's going up. Postmates going up. So go and check it out if you want to play around a little bit. If that's the way you want to make some money during these trying times and you confined to home space, good. Go sign up on Robin Hood. So there are ways and there are means to um, get out of this. If you think like, okay, cool. Well, I definitely want, don't want to move uh, bodies around and humans around. Um, I'm okay with, for example, moving pizzas around, Domino's. So I go sign up. Domino's is hiring. Um, distribution centers are hiring. Medical uh, companies are hiring. Shipping companies are hiring. You know, think of it. Think of which companies you believe would be doing well in these times and which companies are hurting, right? Um, hurting, my friends, are the drivers. There's just the, the pond has dried up, right? The pond has dried up. Um, a typical city that I try to bring into this live feed was Vegas. It says, Vegas Strip is near empty and Nevadans are asked to stay at home to stop spread the coronavirus. Some rideshare drivers now feeling the hit as feeling the hit uh, as rides rapidly decline. It's like a ghost city here, no business, nothing here, right, in Vegas. Awaiting riders in a rideshare waiting zone near McCarran Airport, uh, the Vegas airport, some drivers reporting sitting in their cars for several hours. So people are sitting there for three hours, suddenly a ping comes through. It's hardly anybody moving around, sign of the times. So it came down, you know, like a brick. Um, it just stumbled right down. Um, right after Governor Sisolak ordered all non-essential businesses to close in efforts to slow down the spread of COVID-19. But some drivers say their bills and livelihoods are on the line, which I understand. And guess what? These guys here, my friends, they're not helping you, right? They're not helping you bridge those times, right? They don't have a fund set up for you. So the guy says, I'm hoping just for a ride to anywhere. I'm just hoping for a ride to anywhere, any type of trip. Uh, we need to try to make at least some money rather than staying at home and looking at four walls. Um, if you are staying at home, 
Be productive. Look at ways. There are many work from home models. You don't have to stare at walls, right? Staring at walls means you've surrendered. We're not the type that surrenders, my friend. So I don't quite agree with that person that says, well, you, you know, I'm hoping for a trip to anywhere because it's better off than being at home staring at walls. If you are at home and, and, and you decided to quarantine, that's because you care about your health. And that's the time where you have to get creative and you have to really make sure that you're paying your Wi-Fi bill so that you're online and looking at the possibilities, right? Um, you know, build out a YouTube channel during these times. Um, the guy says, I don't allow anyone to sit in my front seat anymore and I wipe the car down in between rides. Well, that is smart, right? That's working together in a smart fashion. Sorry, I can't let anybody sit in the front right now. Please understand that. Um, sit in the back uh, left corner, driver here, rider in the back on this side, right? Disinfect after every... If you're out there still trying to hustle a couple of trips here and there and you really, really, really need the money because these guys are not putting the money into a fund to protect you, then I get it. I understand it. I'm not judging you. You have a decision here between staying at home, quarantining, um, 100% your health, or, hey, I really, really need the money. I truly, truly need a few trips. I'm going to go out there and hustle a bit for a few hours. Anybody out there last night, Saturday, right? Saturday night should have been one of the biggest hours, uh, 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 days. Did anybody go out and make some money or some decent money? Robin Renan said, look at all the construction crews still working on the streets. When you come out of your homes, look at the change that happened while you were on vacation. Interesting. Uh, Sherelle says, remember that song by the specials? This town is coming like a ghost town. Exactly. It's goat life. Inland Empire, hope you, your family, I met them. I met them at the party. Awesome people. Um, hi, good afternoon. Room, hello, Torsen. Blessings upon you. Blessings upon my brothers and sisters. He, he's a sweetheart. He's a great man. And I was able to give him a big hug, and I will give him a next big, a big hug after we get through this shit. Scott Tucker says, Robin Goat has moved into co-op Torsen. Yeah, that is true. That is true. They gave me that title, right? They came to me to collaborate with me. They have a great model, and we got to give them a chance, right? We've applied for grants, $25 million grants in California, right? $25 million grants are out there to start a rideshare company. So if you want to start a rideshare company, get a good grant writer and tap into that money. Everything's possible, right? Um, Manny Tattoo said, made 100 all day yesterday. Look, Manny, I can tell you, $100 is more than many people did. Scott just revealed he made 30, right? And we're not judging you. This doesn't make you a good or a bad driver because the one made 30 and the other made $100. No, not at all. It's the sign of the times. It's the market, right? Scott might be driving in a complete different uh, market to Manny. Scott might have put in a few hours. Manny might have driven the whole day. Right? We we truly trying to compare apples and oranges here. So data feedback is good. Hey, I worked in that city. I worked this shift right from eight uh, seven p.m. till one a.m. Right in Vegas, for example. I worked X amount of hours on UberX, or I worked on Uber XL and X. I have an XL vehicle, so I drove X and XL trips. And I made these type of dollars. And in that six-hour shift, I put in $15 gas, for example. So that, that gives us some calculations to do real numbers. Robert Garrison says, down in Atlanta, about half doing DoorDash, Postmates, and signed up for Instacart this week. Good. If you guys want to sign up for Instacart, my Instacart is below. If you want to sign up for Robinhood, my link is below. If you want to sign up for the gas app, my link is below. Um, how did I get to the gas app? I signed up under Dustin. Uh, Ken Kun, how are you, my friend? Hope you're doing well. Thank you, my friend. We will we all, all get together. We're going to march into 2021. But we have to work together. We have to work smart. Love Light says, let's see what Monday looks like on food delivery and rides. I could really see the food delivery like Instacart, Postmates increasing daily. As, as the numbers start climbing, sadly, as the numbers start doubling, uh, people will be saying, well, is it worthwhile driving out? I can under the I can go to a grocery store or am I not going to take a risk? 
um, I would rather have my Instacart driver do it, or I'd rather have Postmates guy bring me in food. I, I could see that sector, food deliveries, climbing and climbing and climbing and climbing until you get over the over the hill, right? Manny Tattoo says, today I will go again, see what happens. Um, before all this virus started, I usually make up to 600 on a Sunday only. What market? Again, you know, share what market. $600 are good numbers. Um, how many hours did you put in? What platform did you drive in? Uh, what category did you drive in? That's very, very important. Uh, Teddy... Teddy T says on Robinhood, Domino's is just under $300 a share right now. What was it at, Teddy? Have you been monitoring that share? What was it at, let's say, a few months ago? Or are you saying they're going up and up and up? They're probably going up and up and up and up. LA only. How many hours? That's what I asked. Manny, I need the info, buddy. I'm trying to draw it out of you. How many hours do you put in on average? What platform do you drive in? Okay. To make six hundred dollars, you used to make six hundred dollars in LA. What did you put in? Did you do 12, 14 hours? Did you do five hours on Lyft, five hours on Uber? Give us an idea. Scott Tucker, I'm actually making more on food delivery. That makes me happy. So that to me sounds like a recipe for success, right? Phasing out driving humans, signing up for food deliveries, right? John, we welcome you. I stopped doing food delivery because I don't want to run the risk of spreading it to others. Well, food delivery, I mean, should just be a pickup somewhere and a drop off right at the door. But I hear you. I hear you. If you can still get hold, go on Amazon, buy boxes of these gloves. Anytime you do something, you can put a pair of gloves on, you could throw them. You could throw them in the bin afterwards, right? But these are very, very valuable. Um, shipping time on Amazon now, I think about 10 days, right? A lot of the stuff is coming from overseas. Inland Empire Salvi, believe it or not, guys, your regular customers will call you if you, if you pass a business card out, right? And ask you to drive them right now. I, I agree with that. I agree with that. So make sure, like I said, get those business cards out, get those business cards out. <laughs> Um, somebody just says my ride share business dropped from $398 to $0. And now I prefer to stay at home. It comes from a 561 area code. Thank you for sharing. Um, more and more pictures of Vegas, empty streets. Um, look at this. This is um, LA, three rides, three rides in, three rides in three hours, three rides in three hours and made $33. That's $10 an hour, right? $10 an hour. And there's one tip included of $3.91. Right, so they made 30 bucks, another $3.91. This is LA, Uber X. Um, see, this is shameful down here. You got four, you got four trips in three hours, zero tips. That's shameful. That's shameful, shameful, shameful on all those four people that took a trip. Every single one of those should be a high tip. Do you remotely understand what these people are doing for you right now? You know, and how much did he make in three hours? Three hours, $18. Hello? Um, I will send you the address. I'm busy. My, I'm very busy today. I, I told you I can meet you tomorrow. You can have a look at, um, you can look at the Impala. Today I'm busy, my friend. I'll send it to you. I'm off. I'm just, I'm off the 101 by Calabasas there, by Las Virginis. Okay, I'll send it to you. But right now I have a few other priorities. That's not my number one priority. Okay. I I, I will work with you. I will get together with you, and it'll be in the next 24 hours. But today that is not my priority. Please understand. I appreciate you. Thank you, my friend. Bye bye. Ay ay ay. 
Don't get pushy with me. Um, experts' choice. So Uber is not breaking law because they are passing out 1099. I don't know how to answer that, to be quite honest. I don't, don't really understand your, your question there. Maybe you could re rephrase your question. Oh, okay. Uh, experts choice. I got to read the whole thread. The rider driver says tips have been going down all year. In these times, the tips should be going up, up, and up. I mean, the 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 sheer value of you still being on the road to to a rider should be enormous. I mean, they should be tipping you. 20 to 50 percent right now right so um the other article here let's see you know I'm, I'm, i gave you an example literally example of today one in vegas one in um san francisco in the age of COVID 19 work from home quarantines sweatpants and facetime cocktails Mustafa routine is largely the same. His, dip, his day begins in a two-bedroom Daily City, California apartment he shares with six Uber drivers. He shares with six Uber drivers. Jesus Christ. I mean, that is a, that's a Petri dish, a pot, possible Petri dish. All those six drivers are going out, right, driving, and then they're coming back to the same location. Ay, 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 that's a recipe for disaster. Um, he drinks a cup of coffee, wipes down his... SUV by 10 a.m. He's trawling the streets of San Francisco waiting for a ping. Uh, on a good day, it's a tough business. On a day in the middle of a global pandemic, it's fight to survive. Before coronavirus shut down, the city's offices, schools, and restaurants, McLeod would give around 40 rides during a 12-hour shift. 40 rides during a 12-hour shift in San Francisco. Now he struggles to find 15. More than 10 hours into his shift on a recent Thursday night, he grossed, he grossed $65 pre-expenses, right? These are, these are real numbers. See how the game has changed? And you tell me that these guys here still want to pay themselves these supersonic salaries based on what we're bringing in right now, right? It's wrong. So please uh, share. Um, Hashtag lives over dollars, lives over dollars, right? And I'm urging these guys here, all these smiley faces. We paid for this photographer, by the way, just so that these guys know. We paid for the photographer that took these pictures, right? Our money paid for that, for their little smiley faces, right? I'm urging them to give up 80% of their salary and put it into a COVID-19 driver fund. Now, um, I'm going to leave you a link here. I really, really ask all 131 people or 130 right now who are in this room to um, subscribe to this channel because I will be building out a whole different new channel. You guys will see it's going to be a wealth of information, a lot of new ideas, a lot of new topics. This channel here will stay strictly ride share uh, and gigs, etc. But I'm building out other ways to make money, sharing with you a lot of other personal stuff from my other businesses, right? So if you get a chance, um, I use this, this specific channel that I'm going to click on right now. I'm going to push the link out right now. If you can go there, hit the subscribe button, right? And I will be building that out. Um, you can monetize a YouTube channel. If anybody's interested in creating their own YouTube channel, you can monetize a YouTube channel once you have a thousand subscribers, you have to get to a thousand subscribers. That's not easy. And once you have 4,000 watched hours. So 
a total of 4,000 of your watched video hours of your videos, that's a requirement plus another 1,000 subscribers. Then you can monetize your channel and make money through ads. So if this is something that you believe you can do, you may have a lot of wealth of knowledge about cars or plants, or maybe you're a marijuana grower, or maybe you are a mechanic, or maybe you're a florist, or maybe you are, are, a, are a hairdresser in your part time, and you know how you can teach people how to do, or, or, or whatever it is, cosmetics or makeup, or whatever it is, whatever it is, right? Anything, sports, training, athletic training, uh, whatever you want to build your channel out. Remember that you have to have a thousand subscribers and 4,000 watched hours. So this link, here I go. I click it right now. Boom. There it is. Clicking it right now. That's it. Please go on to that. You see the yellow right here? Click on that and subscribe, right? That currently is just an advertising right here channel. You can see how I advertise if you're interested. Um, I have 9,200 videos that I've produced for all my channels to date. 9,200. Um, this channel, by the way, is close on to 2,000 videos. But I have to date in all the different areas that I do business with, um, whether it's detox products, um, I have a sunscreen line, blah, 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 blah. What I do there is build out the channels um, and certain ones I can monetize, but I, I have to have a 1,000 um, Subscribers first and 4,000 watched hours. One, one more time. There it is. If you could click on that link and just subscribe so that um, I can create an entire new community on different things, right? And if you've subscribed to this channel and to that channel, on this channel, you'll know what you'll get. It's all right, share. It's me going after these companies. It's us talking suggestions on the other one. It's going to be a whole different world, right? Real estate, blah, blah, blah. The different areas that are, you know, I will be, um, you know, having people like the Foo Fighters on the show, some of my NBA players coming in as guests, right? I've already set it up for that, right? The people know what I want to achieve. But I will be switching over um, that particular channel, which is called the Ride Share Driving School, which is one of my other. Income sources, I'm going to be switching that over to a very, very generic, open, fun channel, right? I enjoy doing this, folks. It's, it, it's a lot of fun. I enjoy helping people. I enjoy talking about business. I enjoy talking, interacting with people like you. Sherelle, thank you so much, right? I appreciate that if you can go and subscribe there. Now, um, I want to hear from you. Honestly, it's Sunday today. Is this a chill day for you? Or do you think you're going to try and rally and go out there and make some money? The bottom line is my advice that I just want to give on this Sunday. If you can, stay indoors, stay healthy, practice social distancing, and whatever you do, I mean, literally go to town um, when it means disinfecting everything, getting your gloves, touch, or you're using paper. Um, you know, doing this here, opening up a handle like this is one thing. But remember, you're getting into the car, right? And at some point, this might happen. You know what I mean? So rather grab paper or tear, have like paper, these little napkins in your pockets. And then, okay, I'm going to take one out. Boom. Open up the handle, throw it away, right? I'm going to touch that shopping cart with two pieces of paper. I throw it away. Or I have gloves. I'll throw it away. But whatever you come into contact with, understand that this horrible stuff stays on the surface for days. So I really, really need you to be aware of that. Scott Tucker says it's going to be a chill day. Um, um, yeah, I, I spoke to Taylor Hawkins from the Foo Fighters is, 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 is a good friend of mine, the drummer. I go chill at their house. or so he has like a, a little uh, um, 80s, 90s house with all his Grammys, with all his uh, pictures, with Queen, with all the top rock stars. He tells me all the stories. We sit there. We just sit there together, have a drink, have a beer, have a brewski, and talk. He's an amazing guy. Super, super good guy. Super good dad. These are all people that I got to meet through um, Rideshare, who became private clients. Yesterday, 
who had a phenomenal person call in Bruce from Bruce's Catering. You know, <clears throat> he feeds 10,000 homeless people every year. There's a few hundred trucks going out, right? Gives back. These are the type of people I want in my life. I want to surround myself with different characters, with musicians, with CEOs, with players, you know, whatever it is, like sports players, sports stars, actors. I want, I want to, I just want to enjoy life. I want to be around these people and, and have fun. Obviously, in these times, you can't have as much fun, right? My fiance wanted to go for a walk just now. I still got to take it a little bit easy on my head, but I said, let's go sit outside in the garden. Let's suntan a little bit. Sun's out. Let's go out, you know, maybe have a glass of wine, just chill. Um, anyone make a, okay, you've said it several times. I get it. Frank, Frank, and this is anyone make a DUI plexiglass partition for safety. It's a good idea. I, I've known a couple of people that have sent me uh, pictures of what they're doing. It's probably a good thing. Probably a very, very good thing. Hi, Smiley. I wonder what the rideshare professor's net worth is versus the debt he carries. You know what, my friend? I hate to break it to you, right? But I, I am, I'm extremely happy with what I've created. And you've got to more look into my past. I've built, I've built up a couple of dot-coms and I've sold them. But I don't have to say more than that, right? Uh, this is fun time. So the debt that you carry, I can, the, the only debt that I carry is, for example, um, on a few vehicles, you might finance a few vehicles, but the majority of them are bought at auctions and I can sell them off like this. I can liquidate and turn them into cash like that. So it's not really a debt on paper. You could liquidate those cars anytime. I could still sell a car that I've operated for three years. I could still sell it to the public for just as much as I bought it three years ago on a public auction. Because if you know how to buy Right. You could buy and sell right away and make good margins, do that as well. Or buy classics, build them up, sell them as well, make good margins, right? But they had to just liquidate vehicles, a lot of money, right? So um, thank you for the question. Um, obviously, I'm not here showing bank accounts or, or uh, numbers, but um, just put it this way. There's a couple of dot-coms that I've built up and sold Smiling, right? Gives me the time to be out here and have fun with you guys. Brad Blackledge, guy has no idea. I don't know which guy you're talking about. Manka Travel, how's it, Sheldon? And to go back you got to understand everyone has their story. Everyone has the history, right? Everyone is who they are today. And we look back, we reminisce, you know, we go back in the years. Um, I've never been a lazy kid. I started delivering newspapers at the age of 11. Before school, early in the morning, I would get up and after school. And then I had to be done by four o'clock because my mom and my dad said, you know, homework time. So they gave me the time to get up before school, deliver papers. They gave me the time after school as a little kid. I did that from age 11 to 15. At 15, I started my first mobile disco and catering company. Um, I did that from about five, uh, 15 to uh, 19, and then I started doing big events. And that was while I was doing the army from 19 to 21. I was doing massive, massive events um, every weekend uh, or try to get back home because I had a big event, but I was literally in the army um, serving for my country, not, not, not by choice, but because I was drafted in. But still on the weekends when I had off, I was out there making money, a lot of money. Then when I was finished with the army at 21, I made um, a fortune in, 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 in Europe and South Africa doing big, big concerts, rave events, laser shows. Uh, then while still doing all of that, I went to Europe and did my studies, still did my shows. I had a demolition company, a construction company. Uh, then went back to Africa, um, still did big, big events. Um, I had a company called Mother Production, Farside Production, was doing events for 30,000, 40,000 people um, in Cape Town. Good, good life, uh, 360 days of sunshine, zooming around town, having fun, marketing, organizing, had my downtown office, 
on Market Street down there in, I'm sorry, in Church Street down in Cape Town. Um, then I ventured off into the um, African townships, the uh, what they call the townships, Guguletu, Nyanga, Kailicha, and I started vending companies. At my peak, I had about 4,000 vending machines, right? So I've tried out everything. And sure, here and there I failed, absolutely. But over the years, especially, let's say, from the age of 11 to the age of 30, it was just learning, 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 learning. And when I came to the United States, eventually, I did a couple of big events here in the United States, a couple I was sponsored by, Absolute Vodka, I was sponsored by uh, Red Bull, did a couple of events in LA, um, and then jumped into the dot-com world and did very, very well in the dot-com world. So I've, I've done the whole roller coaster, my friend, had the ups and downs, if that gives that guy some sort of like idea. Like we're talking about the pastimes. So the last 15 years I've been in the dot-com business and the last four years, I've dived into uh, the supplement business, natural cosmetics, detox products, because I, I believe in good, clean products. Um, would I like to get into food manufacturing? Absolutely. Would have loved to have done that. Um, very curious about that side of the, you know, like my, my good friend Bruce, who called in yesterday, he supplies Trader Joe's foods, he supplies Walmart foods, he supplies Target foods. It's crazy. He just has a manufacturing plant, manufactures the food, it gets delivered and makes insane money, 80 to $100 million a year. He does. It, it really interests me because like, he runs his, you know, he lives in Hidden Hills, goes over to his plant in Van Nuys or, or to Atlanta, and they just make food and they ship it to Walmart, to Trader Joe's, to all the Trader Joe's. It's a pretty... Simple business, but I think even simpler than that is the dot-com business. If you know what you're doing, right? If you do understand social media marketing, if you do understand shopping carts, if you do understand how to uh, uh, retain clients that come back and back and back and back and back, just like toilet paper, buy again and again and again. Dot-com business, online business can be extremely, extremely lucrative. Right share is a phase. Right share will eventually. Uh, I ride share two says, did you witness a part night in South Africa? Completely different question. Yes, I want to answer that to you. So if I can go a, a jump from business to talk about apartheid in South Africa, I witnessed it as very, very strongly as a little kid um, when I went to school. I went to a private school and they had um, separate bus shelters for the Africans and separate bus shelters for the whites. But I, I did have... Um, still have one uh, parent, um, I had two parents of him, a dad passed away, but they're both from Europe and they said, we don't buy into the apartheid, we don't practice apartheid, uh, we will point out to you as a kid what's wrong and what's right. And they said like two different bus stops, wrong. Restaurants or food places for different colored people, wrong. So did I experience apartheid? I, I saw the gruesome and horrible sides of apartheid. And, you know, that that's just separating people. I, I saw the horrible stuff. You know, people get killed, blah, 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 blah. I've, I've seen horrible, horrible, horrible stuff in South Africa. But going through that, knowing, you know, and even being out on the street when Nelson Mandela was released from um, prison, even being able to uh, work. I worked with Nelson Mandela's grandchildren. I, I worked with his daughters, Zidzi and Zinzi and Zindiwe Mandela. I worked with their kids, Zedzad Lamini. I've worked with the Mandela family a lot for three years, right, in the nonprofit sector. But I've seen all the phases. I've seen the really worst, horrible times of apartheid. I've seen um, the end of apartheid. I've seen the new South Africa uh, to agree to a degree for a few years. I saw reverse racism, right, reverse the other way around, payback. And now I feel like it's going in a direction where, where um South African communities are working together, right? Where people are getting on, forming companies, going to colleges together, it's, it's, it's functioning. Um, however, in a country that really doesn't take care of its people, where uh, wealthy, wealthy politicians have billions and billions of dollars in offshore accounts, not taking uh, care of educational needs, not taking care of health needs, not taking care 
African people not taking care of their own African brothers, right? The people that are down in the poverty or in the middle class. It's not much of a middle class. It's a really a higher class or a very, very poor class. But the politicians are not taking care of their people. They're taking care of themselves. It's a very, very corrupt country. So within that environment, you still try to practice your daily life, but you have all these corrupt, highly corrupt institutions around you. That's what's going on in South Africa right now. So to give you an idea, I mean, I went off on a wide, wide tangent, but I literally took you from age 11 till today, right, in, in a nutshell. Um, Johnny Clegg died of Shirelle. Johnny Clegg died of cancer not too long ago, about a year ago in Juluka. Uh, watched them many times live. Uh, watched them in Africa many times and also watched them in France, in Paris, Juluka. Johnny Clegg and Juluka. Uh, brilliant. Awesome, awesome guy. If you ever guys get a chance to watch some of the videos, he would have a whole tribal group with him that they would do like the the dances. But he was he had very, very uplifting and uplifting African music, Johnny Clegg and Sabuka or Juluka. Yeah, he died. He died of cancer. Sad. So we'll work together. We'll um we'll we'll rally together. Um, we've been through trying times. These are probably our most trying times, right? I'll admit these are probably the most trying times. Not the most dangerous times I've been, but the most trying times. Uh, Sheldon says, uh, what would you do if tourism in Hawaii is put on hold? The hotels are empty and the airport is preventing more tourists from entering. Okay, so that's, again, that's sign of the times, Sheldon. Obviously, um, these... Uh, Hotels, obviously, these airlines are enticing you, you know, with $100 flights. But, you know, you, 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 you're faced with this great deal, right? Great deal to go down to Hawaii or great deal to go down to Mexico, all inclusive for one-tenth of the cost, right? But people just see this siren, this red flag, you know, coronavirus, coronavirus, getting in a plane. And automatically they say no. Hence, um, that industry hurts big time. There will be many hotels going out of business. There will be many um, airlines maybe going out of business unless they get help. But if you're on boots on the ground in Hawaii, you've got to say to yourself, okay, here I am. I was relying heavily, heavily on tourism for my, let's say, for my Uber business. If you have a fleet or you're an individual driver, it's drying out. There's nothing happening. I'm not making money at the airports on the big island. I'm not driving people down to Kona. I'm not driving people down to Four Seasons anymore. I'm not people going. I'm not driving people down to Turtle Bay or Honolulu, wherever it is, or Kauai or Kauai, whatever, or the islands are called, right? You're not making money. So now you have to say to yourself, okay, that is reality. Maybe just for a few months, maybe it'll get better. But for right now, for the next five, six months, what can I do? So I would say to you, Look at Instacart, look at food deliveries that will always keep on going there and look at other ways, right? You may have to shelve tourism and that for a while, just for a while. It will come back. It will bounce back and it'll bounce back big time because all of these people that have been going through this or will go through this for six to eight months, or however long it takes, they will all need, once this is over, once the wind is blown over, no more cases reported, uh, every all the levels alert levels go down air traffic opens up hotel bookings they will need a holiday you try you don't tell me that we will need a holiday after this if you if you do want to think smart maybe maybe book a, if if you're really positive why not book at super super supersonic low tourism rates hotel why don't you book a trip for december right because by then hopefully it's all over and you can go and enjoy a $3,000 holiday for maybe 500 bucks or $300, right? So if you, I would, I would look, I know one buddy, he booked all these fantastic trips in 2021. I'm like, why did you do that? He said, by then it's over. And it's stuff that I've always wanted to do all my life, but I can do at one tenth of the cost right now. And I'm like, wow, that actually makes sense. It makes sense. Interesting, interesting way to look at it. Um, Rolf Stark says everyone will be broke and won't be able to afford that. That is also a very true statement, right? So 
Um, I'm just saying, if you have the ways and means of doing that, those individuals might have um, some money set aside, they're thinking positive, and they plan for 2021. The majority, I'm telling the majority of the people that are out there hustling day by day, week by week, will obviously not have the monies and be able to enjoy that. But once we're over the hill, once this is over and money starts coming back in, I do ask you at least take a weekend off, go and spoil yourself, go somewhere, right? Just go somewhere, maybe go for a weekend to whatever the Bahamas. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure when cruise ships are going to be safe again, but at some point things are going to be safe again. And go and reward yourself on a small level or on a big level. Do something for yourself. Again, Rolf Stark, exactly. Sadly, sadly so, but that's the truth. Where's Guy Smiley? Can't wait for the right industry to sue you because of all the propaganda. Oh, sweetheart. I'm busy suing them. They, they're more than welcome to sue me. I invite them to sue me. <laughs> Guy Smiley. Guy Smiley, if, if you can do better, you shouldn't judge people. If you can do better, I would, I would suggest one thing. Go out there and do better. Otherwise, you just all talk, right? He's the type of guy that points fingers, but he can't do it himself. We go to his channel. Let's see how many subscribers he has. Let's see what Guy Smiley. It's the type of guy who's angry at this time and just lashing out, right? Usually, it's called jealousy, right? Um, in no fashion am I uh, narcissistic. I, I'm not narcissistic at all. I'm a very, very... The people that know me, I'm a very, very giving person. I'm not a selfish person. But my belief is somewhere deep down there, you're projecting. You're trying to project your little story upon someone else. And unfortunately, my friend, it's not working. Right? It's not working. But good try. I'm trying to read some of the comments. Yeah, I just wanted to share that experience with you. Right, exactly. Every everyone has a story. Everyone has experiences, right? That's the cool thing. Abstract Echo says, um, hashtag expert uh, to expert choice. True, but we are still classifi classified as independent contractors. I do hope that the whole topic of employeeship or em uh, employees, independent contractors is sped up and they come to some agreement and that we could have some sort of hybrid and start putting money into people's pockets, right? So it's, it's like, it shouldn't be a time where ride share companies and the states are battling it out. It should be, okay, how do we solve this? Let's get the solved. Let's move on. Let's get money into the system. It's got to be a, a win for the company, win for the state, win for the driver, win, win, win situation. If they can think like that, it would be great. Yeah. Johnny Reicher says, take Ignatia, Ignatia supplements daily. You know, you can at, at least take 5,000 IU to 10,000 IU of D3 daily, at least four to 5,000 milligrams of vitamin C daily. You can take your Ignatia. You can take 50 milligrams to 100 milligrams of zinc per day. And if you have colloidal silver spray, that's great. Anything just to keep that immune system upright. I, I, I take a couple of droplets of this Every day, just to keep the lungs and the bronchia healthy, my friends, if you put two or three drops of this, it's expensive stuff. Um, if you put this straight up, two, three drops, it feels like a fire ignites inside of your lungs. Powerful stuff. No pills, no pharmaceuticals. All right, my friends, we're at the 
one hour 20 mark. I'm on 79 if I can get uh, 11 more, if we can get it up to 90, 11 more. Um, and then please, I request uh, just drop in at this channel and um, subscribe there. That's going to be a whole new interesting area that I want to share with you, a whole different YouTube world, right? And I'm gearing up, buying certain things. Don't want to let the cat out of the bag, but please, if, if, you, if you went there right now and subscribed, just give me a thumbs up, right? Um, that will not be about rideshare. I'll be phasing out that side on rideshare. This will be rideshare, and the other thing will be a whole new um, YouTube channel. But I already have 1,700 subscribers. They already have almost 4,000 channels. I want to get that monetized and want to get another channel going. My goal is to get three good YouTube channels going, right? And you will see, I will introduce, when we go live with those topics, you will see the topics. We're on 82. Can I get another eight thumbs up? David J, appreciate you, brother. Um, all of you, thank you. Um, chill out on Sunday. Um, maybe make up your minds what next week's going to look like. I'm going to stop or I'm going to work a little bit. If I do work a little bit, I'm going to work smart. I'm going to be very, very, very vigilant. Use today to think about things, my friends. Use today to plan out the next week. You know, come up with some good plans today or spend it with your family. But I, I would take time out today. I would take time out just for you. Figure this out. Cheryl says, we are the, we are the scatterlings of Africa. I know the song. It's a good song. It's a good song. Johnny Clegg, may he rest in peace. Uh, we're on 86. I need cuatro, four, four, four more, five more. Need five more thumbs up. You want to come say hi quickly? Wish all these, um, say hi, wish them all a wonderful, wonderful kiss. Coronavirus kiss. <laughs> Social distancing. Social distancing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we just practice social distancing. Listen, if she has it, I already have it. If I have it, she has it, right? So we're under the same roof here. Whoop, whoop. 91. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you all. Thumbs up, thumbs up. Everybody thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, one more time, please subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, again, please subscribe there. Every, uh, Jimmy says, hi, Laura. Hi. Cheryl says, hi. hi. Come and say goodbye one more time. Bye. Bye. <laughs> hi and bye. Thank you. Much love to you guys. Be safe and um, chill today. Check this out. I always like this. Is this? I always like these pictures. A lot of color, a lot of positivity, a lot of hearts, a lot of thumbs up. That's who we are, my friends. Never forget that. That's who we are. God bless. Drive safe. Be safe. Be vigilant. Hey, you know?